Hey guys, welcome to a quick, I don't know what kind of style video this is, but I was recently looking for new monitors and I'm really looking to get that new LG 38 inch, which is uh, 3840 by 1600 and can do a 144 hertz overclocked 175, something like that. I do many years with my monitors. I now have, uh, I currently have two Korean import uh, cross over monitors and those have served me great over the years but I'm kind of ready for something else and well those new LGs with the nano IPS and stuff like that look really cool. So I also recently bought some new audio equipment and I'll make a separate video about that at some point. So today I bought yeah yeah this is uh, the most planned video ever I bought a LG, LG UHD monitor 4K 27UK600, so a 4K IPS monitor. And I've been looking at these for a while, but, oh, hold on, there we go. I mostly found them too expensive, but I was looking here in the Netherlands in the shops and there was currently a, uh, a rebate or uh, discount going on and this one was only 300 euros now 300 euros is a good price for any ips screen and especially 4k one and looking at lg's product stack they have the 600 the uk 600 uk 650 and that adds a a better stand basically this one has a static stand but it's not even in screen there we go um so you can't move it in any position and you'll need a stack of papers or something like that to get it on the right height. So the UK 650 adds a height adjustment stand and also a pivot. Now I would have liked to get the pivot function because I will be running it in portrait or in the setup in the end, I'll be running it in portrait. Um, but that was a hundred euros extra. And since I'm going to visa mount it anyway, um, well, why spend that 100 euros now if I'm going to change the stand anyway? So they also make a UK 850 and on top of the better stand that adds USB-C and USB-C charging. So if you have like a MacBook or actually my own HP you can use USB-C to transfer, transfer USB, a display signal, even 4K and also charge the laptop. That works great. We use those at the office, but this is the cheapest one and 300 bucks or 300 euros. I mean, I just couldn't pass it up anymore. And I'm going to use this one to evaluate the current um, level of image quality of IPS, I guess, because this is one of their most recent screens. And because the 38 inch version, when it's out, it's probably going to be around $2,000. And I kind of want to make damn sure I want that thing, because if it isn't absolutely perfect, uh, that's going to be quite expensive. So let's, uh, I don't know, unbox this one and I'll put it on my desk and I'll give you a quick first impression in comparison to the monitors I had or the monitor I had. And don't expect a full review. This isn't a review video. This is just a... Uh, well, Quinder unpacks a monitor, shows you some stuff, replaces it on his desks, and talks to you, I guess. So yeah, let's uh, let's get this thing out of the box. Yeah, this is going great. I uh, probably opened the wrong side of the box because I really didn't pay attention. Oh well. That might be why it says Do not open here. Uh, and, oh, look at that. It says, open here. Well, that didn't happen. No 
Okay. Okay, the cap. HDMI. Display port. Power cable. Oh, it's actually one of those. Uh, if you can see that. One of those three prongs you mostly get with laptops adap adapters too. Okay. And well, the adapter. And the adapter is 19 volts, 2.53 amps. That's also the same voltage most laptops use. Okay. Um, let's put it on the table. Two screws. Can those go in here? Yes. If you ever need a good screwdriver set, I uh, have a few of these actually by now. And these are, well, it's a Chinese set, but they're really awesome. So if you're looking for one, I'll have one in the description because, you know, affiliate stuff. But, uh, I actually use them a lot, and I really like them. Okay, I'm guessing that's where this cap comes in. It's like plastic fantastic, but, you know, it was cheap. Okay, then oh, I can probably do something like this. Yes, it's coming together. Okay. There we go. Okay, so while it's on the table, I guess we can look at the import. So it has a display port in, two HDMI in, which I believe are both HDMI 2.0, DC 19 volt, and it actually has a headphone jack. So you can do audio out towards your headset or headphone or whatever and the audio would be transferred by DisplayPort or HDMI. So even if you use this for a console, and it, I don't know if it has any speakers, I don't believe so, you can still get the audio out. Okay, let's uh, put this thing on the desk. <coughs> oh, my office is getting too small. Or I'm just cramming too much stuff in it. Okay, let's take a look at it. Although the stand is a bit plasticky, um, uh, it's actually pretty sturdy when it's, once it's on the desk. And it does do, oh, let me show you. It does do uh, tilt adjustment, I guess. But it doesn't do any other adjustments than that. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. It's uh, I hate it that they put these things on the screen. Hold on, I'll show you in a minute. These things, why? Just put them on the back or something. I put them on the back when, once I've seen them. Don't put them on the screen. Anyway. There we go. Perfect spot for that. Um, okay. Um, uh, well, uh, I guess uh, I'll... Uh, I'll put it on my disc and uh, let's see how it looks versus the one that's there right now. Okay, welcome in my office. I know we've recorded videos here before, but that's been a while, mainly because of audio issues. But if you follow the channel, you've probably seen over the year that I've been testing sound foam and now I'm getting a new monitor and I have these new speakers and mixer panel and stuff like that. And well, it really doesn't fit on my desk anymore. What am I going to do? Well, it's obvious. I should finish my ultimate overkill disc project. Ultimate overkill disc. Uh, the plans for that are laid out. Uh, as I mentioned before in another video, a friend of ours is coming to help me with that. I actually have uh, one of the wood planks, uh, you can't see that, uh, over here. And I've been testing new finishes and uh, doing some other stuff. All the LED controllers are now done, which I kind of started designing for that project. So it's not like nothing has been happening. 
but there's just not been any updates and woodworking really isn't my thing. But this video isn't about that, but it's related to that. So this is my current monitor. Uh, they're both crossover monitors. This one is from, I don't know how long ago, five, six years, uh, was one of those yeah, this is a Korean monitor and it has the same panel as an Apple cinema display. And well, it's been pretty good. And uh, this panel is a newer one and this one also has an LG IPS panel, but they're all kind of B quality. And this one, the special thing about it is that it was 100 hertz. Now that introduced me to high frame rate displays and I really love it. I'm willing to pay 500, 700 euros extra for a display that can do 120 hertz instead of only 60. But things have changed a little bit. Since I've been space cramped because I wanted to get the speakers on the desk because I'm testing those right now, um, I put this monitor in portrait mode or pivoted it or whatever you want to call it. And I kind of like it. I really like it. So I'm going to replace this one if the new, I like the new IPS panels. I'm going to get the 38 inch one. I think I am. It's, it's so much money. Those people don't sponsor me. <laughs> anyway, uh, I should, I can probably do like five to 10 years with it. I still have monitors from 15 years ago. So if I look at it like that, maybe, maybe I can justify it for myself, but we're going to see. So anyway, um, I would put the LG one in portrait mode. And the reason for that is these are both 1440p displays. So that's 2560 by 1440p. And although that's a lot higher than 19, uh, than 1080p, so 1920 by 1080, in portrait mode, you basically have 1440 by 2560, of course. Um, but most applications, the reasons I use it is so I can, for instance, get Spotify and get a terminal session in those resolutions and have a few of them on top of each other. And that's been really well, well working well for me. So even while video editing, I'll have my preview screen down here and I can still have some status displays and some performance monitor and other crap you probably don't need, but I like to look at. And well, that's the reason for getting a 4K monitor this time. The resolution horizontally, if it's in portrait mode, will then be 2160 instead of 1440p. So it gives me a lot more, well, resolution to work with basically. And since I'm really close to the monitor, I think that's going to work out, but we'll have to see. And since I got the 300 euro dollar, whatever version, it doesn't have a pivot stand. It has a do nothing stand. Oh, well, except to tilt a little bit. Uh, so for now, I'm going to replace my main monitor with it, which also has a basic stand. So, eh. and if I like it, I'll probably get the 38 one that will go here and basically in the corner because it will be round a little bit. And then I'll still, get the use the 4k one in a portrait so you have a good horizontal resolution still even though you're in portrait mode but those are all my blah opinions and whatever um, i'm going to replace it and you're watching this on a video so you're probably not going to see any difference whatsoever but hey um i'm having fun So, monitors installed, and well, it's actually a few hours later, because Windows desktop looks great. 4K makes everything look just that little bit sharper, and this is at 150% scaling. And basically, I end up with the same desktop space as 2560 by 1440, but as I said, it's just sharper. Image quality is great. I think uh, blacks are also great, but I'm used to IPS. I actually can't stand VA, so. Um, I played some Destiny 2, that was fine, even in 4K with the GTX 1080. And then I played some uh, No Man's Sky because it recently had a new patch. And although the performance in 4K was, eh, 
I, I need to upgrade my graphics card at some point if I want to play at 4K, or if I want to play at uh, 3840 by 1600 with uh, like 120 FPS. But that's an upgrade I can do later. Um, but enabling HDR in No Man's Sky really made a big difference. The picture was beautiful and although this monitor is rated for HDR and actually got auto-detected in Destiny 2 and it got auto-enabled, um, it can't reach the minimum brightness required for HDR 400. So it can only reach 350 nits. And well, that's why it doesn't have the certification, but everything else works. It can produce the colors, it can produce the highlights. So I was actually very surprised by that because it made things look a lot better. I really can't explain it. I can't really record it on my camera. I did some shots while I was playing, so you can take a look at that. Uh, but all in all, I'm, I'm very happy with the picture quality. Uh, viewing angles are excellent, uh, as, a, as you should expect from IPS. Um, the matte coating, which I didn't have on my previous monitors, especially this one, um, is excellent also. It doesn't uh, uh, dilute any of the detail I've seen with other matte coatings. And the stand, well, uh, it's pretty sturdy. And the way it's constructed is that the screen is actually pretty far back, because I've seen stands where you need like 20 centimeters or your screen comes 20 centimeters towards you. Well, most often you don't really want that. So that worked fine too. The screen actually has speakers. Turns out they suck, uh, especially if you have like uh, better speakers there. But in a pinch, maybe it, it will at least produce some sound. Um, other than that, I think for $300 euro, this is a complete steal. It's an excellent monitor. Quality is excellent. And if you're looking for something for just the Windows desktop or just some light gaming up to 60 frames per second. Oh, I tested FreeSync. FreeSync works fine, but only between 40 and 60 frames per second. But then again, if you're playing in 4K, that might be enough. So if you're looking for anything like that and you don't need any analog inputs, such as VGA, for instance, I think I can recommend it. I've only had it for a few hours, but I like it. It does everything well. So this was my very non-scientific, non-review, first impression, whatever. Um, I hope you liked the video and more interesting videos about the server and other stuff coming up. I just bought this today, so I thought, eh, let's make a video about it. Okay, thanks for watching and uh, catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.